Hello and guten Tag. My name is Max. This is Make and Modify. And yeah, I usually don't do videos anymore. But from time to time, there's a topic uh, where I break this and uh, where I think it's worth documenting it for me and also for you out there. So the topic of today's video will be basically flashing the Smart Life USB switch with ESP Home. I like to shop for cheap electronics, home automation electronics on AliExpress. And usually I buy Zigbee devices because they just work and I don't have to use a Chinese cloud app, whatever. But uh, from time to time, uh, I accidentally buy a Wi-Fi version and then I have to convert these to make them usable. And um, this is basically where I show you my process for this. So what you will need is a device you want to modify. Uh, then you will need a USB to TTL converter. For me, I use one of those. They are cheap enough. You can also get them on Amazon if you prefer. Um, yeah. Also, what you should have is some basic knowledge of Home Assistant and ESP Home. You should have flashed something with ESP Home before. That would make it easier for you. Then there are some tools we need. Um, we need the LT chip tool. As you can see, it usually comes with a GUI um, available here. And um, yeah, for Windows, just get the EXE file and use that. Uh, for Linux, I'm on Linux Mint. It recommends using the WX Python library, but for me, the GUI did not really work properly. So I use it with command line tools. But anyways, then it's just pip install LT chip tools. Then for reverse engineering the firmware, we will need these BK7231 tools. I will put all the links in the description and make sure to upload my documentation. So these also install with a pip. Then optional, you might need a kickstart firmware. Uh, there you can go to releases and then choose the image according to your device. What device do you have? Yeah, you will have to open it up and have a look inside. It's basically on my one, it's uh, writing CBU. And from experience, I know that this is a, you can also see it. We can also then see it here later. It will be a BK7231N. So basically get the proper one here. But yeah, let's start. Um, the first thing you need to do is open up your device. In this case, it has two latches, um, was relatively easy to open up. S then we will have to look out for the TX RX pins. We also will need ground. This will be that pin. Later on, we will also need the CEN pin. But for now, we hook up the TX, the RX, to our converter and also ground. Power could be hooked up here also, but I will just power it on via USB. Also, here is the drawing of the pins. As we can see, it's just connected on this side to the PCB. So all our pins that will activate the USB ports will also be one of those. So it will be P6 to P8 or P26 or P24. Uh, that will become important later when we reverse engineer the firmware that is currently on there. But before we can reverse engineer what is currently on there, we will have to dump the firmware. For this, we connect our converter and power off the device for now. Then we start our tool with this command. Um, again, I will uh, put this documentation in the description. Then the tool will start and it will wait. It will go until here and then it will wait. Then you power on the device and then it will dump the flash. Uh, as you can see, this took 219 seconds for me for the first time. The second time was faster then. Um, speaking of the second time, dump it twice with two different file names. In between, you won't have to power cycle it just after the first dump, just execute the command again and it will start dumping again. Then you can use MD5 sum and then star.bin, for example, or whatever, 
and then uh, you will see a checksum and those have to be identical. If they differ, you will have to dump the flash another time, make the checksum again and see if you have two identical copies. That makes sure that you have the proper backup of the firmware that is on there so you could flash it back in case something doesn't work how you want it. Okay, next thing. We will have to find out which pins were used. I mean, we could we could trace it or use a multimeter, but in this case it's easy enough. It will be three pins that just uh, switch the uh, ports and they are on this side. So we use this command uh, to disassemble or to yeah take apart the firmware image. After this, we get a folder that looks somewhat like this dump and there we have different files. In this case, you can have a look at the JSON files. This time it was the storage JSON, which had all the information we needed. And there we can see something like this. And most of this is really not relevant for us. Um, we can just have a look for the, for the pins that we set. So six to seven and 24 and 26. And if we then have a look at the user parm keys and scroll a bit down, then we see here the RL1 pin, RL2, RL3. So we have three ports we can switch. So here it's 7, 26 and 24. And that correlates with uh, what we would expect. So 24, 26 and pin 7. Great. Yeah, in this case, that was all the reverse engineering we needed to do. The next step is optional, but can make it easier. If you skip this step, you will basically just go to flashing the ESP home firmware. But um, for now, let's do it like that. Um, what we do is go to the kickstart page, as mentioned before, download the proper version for our chip. As said, it's a BK7231. Uh, while we are still connected to the device, the device is powered on. We can start the flashing, but nothing will happen. That is the point where we then have to connect the CEN and ground pin. This is basically like a reset pin. Uh, power cycle will not help. This is this pin above our RXTX pins. This pin and just connect this to either ground or uh, in, in my case, I just connected it quickly to the casing of a USB port because that's ground too. Yeah, then it will flash this kickstart firmware. After this is completed, it will set up a hotspot where you can connect via your phone or your computer. And then it's reachable under kickstart bcable.local. You can go on there and then tell it to connect to your local Wi-Fi. Uh, by now we already got rid of the original firmware, so it should be fine. After that, it should still be available under this uh, address, but you have to connect to your local network then first. Maybe you will have to also power cycle it. When you did that, you will have a screen that looks a bit like this, maybe in light mode, not in dark mode, but yeah, it would look like this. The nice thing about this is here you can just upload your firmware as a firmware file. And also for reverse engineering, if we should not have been successful in the step before, we could uh, select a pin and a mode, and then we could toggle the state or something just to verify that we have the selected the proper pins. That's that. And if we have it like that, we have we are almost there. We now need a ESP Home firmware. For this, we need our ESP Home builder. We add a new device, continue, give it a name. Uh, let's call it 3x USB. Next, um, we want the BK72XX. Then we have the choice to use the CPU. Uh, this might also work the BK7231N, but since CPU is written on the module, I'll just go with CPU. Next, um, you don't have to copy this because it's in the YAML anyway. Skip and then go edit. Here you have our name, uh, all the other information that is needed. And then we can just add our switches. 
platform, GPIO, USB1, this is just the name, and then the pin that we got from reverse engineering. Um, I had to use the GPIO in front of the number, and that's it. And then you could hit install and install it uh, wirelessly or plug it directly into the PC or whatever. For me, uh, since I'm running Home Assistant on a bit older Raspberry Pi, I compile it on my PC and upload it from there to the device. Here you will have to add the IP address or the address in maybe even it's a kickstart beacon. Yeah, and after this you go to your Home Assistant install under add-ons, ESP Home, there it will tell you, hey, I found a new device. It might name it Kickstart, but if you say edit, then it will edit to your Home Assistant and with a proper name or with the proper name you, you gave it in the, um, in the settings here. Yeah, and then it will just show up and you can toggle the USB ports. And yeah, that's really it. That is all you need to know. Um, it's sometimes a bit hard to find this information condensed down, so I made this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, don't wait for the next video. I don't know whenever this will come, but it might. Uh, have a great day. Bye.